Mr. is not here tonight. He had a family situation and asked to um, uh, be able to take care of that. So I think that we all understand that family is important, correct? So um, we're going to go ahead and move through this. Um, so we will go to item three, changes or additions to agenda. And I don't believe that there's any. Any changes or additions? Okay. I move that the board approve the consent agenda as presented. And moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Robert Gilbert's here. Gilbert's going to be on phone uh, here a little bit later. He has to be in Gilbert. Oh, he's not in Gilbert right now? Um, he can be at any time now. Yeah. I can get him on the phone at any point here. Would you rather he was on the phone right now? Well, I, at least someone should know. I think that everyone should know he's either going to be on the phone or not. But the, yeah. You know, yeah, I apologize. Uh, Gilbert had to be out of town tonight, um, but wanted to participate. And so um, maybe I'll go ahead and get him on the phone right now just to. Uh, no, I got my directions right here. <laughs> That is a cute little dog. Hey, it wants a passcode, and I have no idea. Yeah, it's probably because we're allowed to, we don't have to. They're actually adopting that policy. We haven't got it yet. Yeah, it's a little bit of a dog. It's a little bit of a dog. Let's go ahead. Consent agenda, and you are on speakerphone. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So we've established the phone connection with Gilbert now. So we're going to move forward. <clears throat> to item five, personnel. <clears throat> I move that the board approve the personnel changes as presented. I'll second. It's mm -hmm. been moved and seconded. Um, now, on personnel, we're accepting retirement. Um, uh, Debbie Denny, um, who has served how many years, Debbie? 36. Nice. Yeah. Thank you very much, by the way. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> and believe it or not, she was actually here my senior year as a teacher. <laughs> you were only 12. <laughs> <laughs> I was 13. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that alone. <laughs> anyway. um, also, um, we're approving a certified contracts for 2013-2014 and um, approving non-represented contracts for 2010-11. Okay, we're going to fix that. All right. All right, we're going to um, approve the leave of absence request to hold. Um, and I believe that's maternity. Okay. Um, so now we've corrected this. Um, motion i think that we need to make a new motion and as corrected because we had to correct these dates that means we have to vote on it so we all have to say no and then read the motion okay all right that sounds right all right so right now we're going to vote down the original one that's on the table right now so that we can move forward and make a new motion as amended so all those in favor say aye. Those opposed? No. No? Motion does not carry. 
All right, now let's get a new motion on the table, please. Move that the board approve the personnel changes as corrected. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Uh, who did the uh, negotiations for these contracts? <clears throat> Can we do some clarification to that? These contracts aren't under negotiation at this time. Oh. So there is uh, basically a rollover to the next. Oh, okay. Okay, but we have contracts that are coming up for negotiation. Yes, All right. Okay. Further discussion? All right. Just for the sake of uh, the audience, um, the uh, even though the contracts are not up for negotiation, they're uh, available to inspect apparently. Um, they range from thirty-five thousand uh, to sixty-four to over a uh, hundred when you can combine some of the things that that are done. So we have a, a fairly wide range of uh, salaries in this district, and there's quite a few that are. I think that are doing quite well, and uh, it's just something that you can get online and go online and see all the salaries. It's just the way it is. I, um, it's uh, from any district in the state, you can see that. Um, it's kind of interesting to know that. Yeah. Anything, anything further on the personnel motion? Any discussion? All right. I have a discussion. We can pass it or not. And then okay. Comment. I just wanted. And uh, Debbie Dane, I just wanted to say there's, in our family, there's seldom that we get a unanimous uh, opinion on anything. But in, uh, in this case, uh, everybody agrees that uh, Debbie Dane was a terrific teacher and um, is reluctant that I personally accept her designation. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. I, I motion carries. Okay, now um, public comment. Um, we have oh, five five people signed up, um, and what I'd like to do, if if you are would like to ask a question of the interim superintendent candidates or make a comment about that, I would like to move that portion of the public comment to, um, oh, why can't I see it right now? Uh, item eight, new business, um, C. If you have something else that you would like to talk about, we could take care of that right now. And, uh, but it would, I think it would be better just to hold all of the superintendent questions or comments or anything to uh, while we're dealing with that. So um, I'll just ask uh, Mike Queener, would you like to speak now? I'll do for all week. Okay. Um, is it David Anderson? Yeah, that's me. Um, that's me. I know I'm actually going to play cash out. So I just want to go there in case anybody has to do something. Okay. And help me with your name. Let's talk. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not like this moment. Ron Salmi. Later, please. All right. Danny? Yeah. Do you have a first name, Miss Danny? <laughs> no, just Miss Danny. Okay. <laughs> um, I, want, I like to speak about. Okay, I have great. a huge concern, and sorry, Karen, but um, you guys just loaded it up again. And I have real concern for her because this lady works all the time. She puts a lot of hours in. And you're gonna, you can say, well, she's your best friend, so you're saying this. No, I'm saying it as a teacher professional, knowing what she does every day. And this isn't whining, it's the facts. You just dump the Chinese immersion program on her. And I don't get that. She had nothing to do with it. She wasn't at the start, she wasn't at the ground base. She might know a little bit more about it than I do, which could be a lot, because I still don't know a whole lot about it. And so, when you do, when you start looking at jobs that are to be done around here, I would like to see some of her workload like because I think she's doing more than her share. That's all I need to say. Thank you. All right, thank you. 
Okay, um, I guess there's no further public comment. Um, so we'll move to um, seven unfinished business. Second reading school, school board policies 1400, 2151, 3210, 4310, 5240, and 6030. And I would assume that everybody's had an opportunity to look over those. I move to approve the school board policies as presented. I'll second it. Okay, uh, discussion? Uh, yeah. Um, most, of these, you know, most of these are coming from, uh, are written, I guess, by WASDA, right? Yes. And of course, WASDA writes them in, in accordance with the uh, RCWs and the changes to them uh, by the legislature. Um, uh, there's, there's, I'll try to go in, in the order of some of these. Uh, under the interscholastic activities section, um, there's a spot in there that says students will provide evidence of coverage of the minimum limit of insert amount of for insurance and I assume we have an amount that we now use but it doesn't say that and we need to include that in that policy of interclass um, activities. Um, um, perhaps um, either John or Karen know what we currently require of um, insurance limits for that uh, purpose. In any event, we, I don't think we can, and perhaps we can amend this to say, well, we'll insert the amount that is required. I'm, I'm not sure what this uh, requirement is statewide, uh, if there is one. Uh, we can always exceed it, whatever it is, but uh, there's probably a limit that we've currently been having that just isn't shown. That's one. Um, If you want to discuss that particular before I go into the next section. I thought all the kids had to already do that. Provide coverage, show coverage, correct? Right. But you're just concerned just about the amount. The policy that we, um, that we are showing here just doesn't show a limit. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what our limit is. Um, that's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. it, it, it probably should be in there. But we don't know what that limit is offhand. We, we must have it. I mean, we must have one in there now. And uh, the obvious thing is that we can change it if we want to. But we, at this meeting, I'm sure we don't need to. But uh, uh, you know, when it says insert amount, that just means this is a standard form that we that was copied from Wasda, and you know that's our. You know, we can probably just go on and just say we can insert that amount, whatever it is. Uh, at a later date, we don't have to do it now because we obviously can't find out what that limit is. And it's not a major thing, I just want to point it out. Under the policy of discrimination, uh, here's what it says. District will provide equal ed educational opportunity and treatment for all students in all aspects of the ac academic and activities programs without regard, without discrimination based on race, religion, creed, color, national origin, age, honorably discharged, veteran, or military status, sex, sexual orientation, uh, including uh, gender expression or identity, marital status, the presence of any sensory, mental, or physical disability, participation, that's all, okay. Um, one of the things that was excluded, well, okay, before I get to the Boy Scout thing, um, the added, I, I'm not sure when it was added, I think it was 2010, it added gender expression or identity to this list of growing list of of, or of, of people that we cannot um, we cannot discriminate against. And later it talks about uh, that the district in the same area of discrimination policy discusses that the district will conduct a annual athletic evaluations and student athletic interest and survey and so forth, and goes on to say that. Um, uh, that it, uh, 
We have to have this interest survey at least every once every three years to ensure that equal athletic opportunities are provided for male and female students. Okay, so we have the issue in my mind of uh, a uh, potential gender expression person deciding to be on a chosen team and what do we do with these people with respect to restrooms and showers. Um, I'm sure this has been debated at some point in the legislature. It would have been nice to hear that. But they're throwing this kind of regulate these, these disparaging, uh, disparaging regulations onto the school. And we have to deal with them. But they're the ones who just passed the rules. And the rules say, you know, we have to, we can't discriminate with respect to gender expression or identity, whatever that means. I'm sure someone thinks it means something. They, they must have the legislator. And then our legislators are passing this stuff, and we're having to deal with it at, the, at, the, at this level. And it just, and we don't have any choice in putting this in the policy either. We, we have to adopt this. And I'm just here to say that elections and people who we send to Olympia make a difference. And it just, it's, maddening to have to deal with this kind of stuff. And this is the kind of stuff that superintendents have to deal with and the, and the teachers have to deal with all the time. And it just is, it's, it's uh, frustrating to me to see this because it, it, there's all, all kinds of issues that raises and it gets into the legal issue as well. And so it's, it's, it's very difficult. And, it's, uh, and when you, I mean, we can just pass these policies and no one would even maybe even think about them until it comes up. And that's what, uh, I just wanted to mention because it's you know it's just inserted in here. It's just kind of hidden, uh, and it, uh, it's it's frustrating to see. For me, uh, I'm new to this this board, relatively new, but I, you know it's amazing how often you find out things that just don't seem to make a whole lot of sense, and yet we're having to deal with it. And um, these are the questions that we need to ask our legislators: How are we supposed to deal with these things? <coughs> Um, okay, so would you like, I mean, do you want to pull any of these out or? No, we can't. Um, we can't pull any of these out. It, we, it's in the law, and so there it is. Um, I'm just saying that we're going to have to think about it if it ever comes up. You play ostrich on this. Would you just stick your head in the sand and hope it never does? I, I know. There's nothing we can do. I mean, this is established by. Right, I think we're all on the same page, but it's, it's like, okay, this is in another world. Uh, yeah, well, this is the world that we have to deal with here. Yeah. And just, you know, I just like to let people know these things. I mean, I don't know to what extent you do. I'm sure the staff here is familiar with it, um, somewhat, but, uh, and we haven't probably had this issue. The other question I had with that same thing, though, was that, uh, um, that list of, you know, that I mentioned, it, that include marital status and race, blah, blah, blah. It, it eliminated participation in the Boy Scouts of America. I'm not sure why that was eliminated as part of the group that would be okay to be accepted. Um, it seems, I, I, I think I know there's something to do with, uh, with the Boy Scouts that, that we've seen in national news, but I'm not sure what that, why it was even in there in a way but they're taking it out, which makes, makes me think that there's something going on that I'm not aware of. Um, it, it's, so even the legislature, you see, has, has difficulties with this, because they'll put something in one time and then they'll take it out because they don't really know what they meant the last time they put it in. Well, actually, it's added back in below that. Right? Well, but it's not quite the same, though. Yeah, it's, it's just that it's just it's just so they can use the facilities. Massage and the Boy Scouts can use the facilities, but apparently we can uh, discriminate against them because we've eliminated them from the list of those we can't discriminate against. I mean, that, to me, that's what, these are the questions that I'd like to find a legislator come in and explain this to this board, this kind of stuff. And maybe we can finally get them to say, get the heck out of this business because we can't deal with this. We've got enough trouble and interest in trying to just educate kids without having to deal with this kind of stuff. Um, later on the, uh, in these policies, I'll jump to the next. We, there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, it's, uh, I'm not saying we can change this because we can't. This is all according to policies. 
but we're adopting them. And I, I don't like adopting these things, but we don't have any choice. That's what I keep saying. We don't, you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're a bunch of potted plants up here. We can't, uh, all, we can't decide what we can, you know, in our own mind. Mushrooms. Yeah. Mushrooms. Huh? Under evaluation of staff, is a, it's a fairly new section, and it has to deal with uh, the new rules that have come down from uh, OMBL. And it's, uh, uh, let's see, among, it's a fairly lengthy addition, uh, all in keeping with the new RCWs that have been adopted by the legislature regarding the evaluation of, of staff. And it, uh, this is one thing where we're just going to mention it. There's a section that says, pursuant to state law and implementing the professional growth and evaluation system, the board will adopt a schedule for implementation. So we have to adopt a schedule for implementation on that. Later on, it says the board will also adopt a revised evaluator criteria and four-level rating system for all certified classroom teachers, certified principals, and assistant principals. And it will include a, the minimum criteria developed by the OPI. So we adopt these policies, but we are saying that we're going to have to also adopt these uh, a schedule of implementation and a, and a uh, revised evaluative criteria the board has to. So it, we're, we're, this is part of the requirement that we have, and so we can't ignore that. And it's again that superintendent, of course, would be on top of this to, um, to try and help us do that. But just so that you know that you know, we're going to be looking at this again from a board perspective. Um, and it, you know, whenever I see something like the board will adopt, it, you know, it sort of is a underline for me because it, you don't have any choice again. But uh, we're going to have to be very aware of, of all these changes. I get the feeling this is part of the TPAP. That's what I. Yeah, I'm that. sure it is. Uh, the whole thing was yes, involved of that. Yeah. I can speak to that. Actually, um, <clears throat> the beginning of the 13th or 14th school year, we were required to implement evaluation and we are going with the um, cells IDs out of the University of Washington. And in the first year of implementation, you have to have all new teachers and provisional teachers on board. And over the next two years, so beginning with 15, 16 school year, you have to have 100% of your staff on board with that. So there is an implementation um, process and what that means is we sit down and decide, okay, who has to be on it next year? Okay, then who has to be on it? Who will we add the next year and the following year? So that's what the implementation <coughs> process is, and administrators, along with the superintendent, would sit down and then we would present that to the board. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Okay. Well, that pretty much handles uh, the comments on the policies that were <coughs> after blindly adopted. Okay, further discussion? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, we're going to move to eight, new business. Um, a, approved title one, um, parent involvement plan, 13 14 year. Uh, I'll move that the board approve Title One Parent Involvement Plan for 2013-14. Uh, uh, second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Yeah, actually, I do have a question. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But, um, Title One, uh, I think it was the, the Act of the uh, Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. I think that's where it came from. And that act actually forbids federally determined curricula. Um, you will uh, be interested, I mean, I thought, well, that's interesting because, of course, we're having to adopt the Common Core, uh, and wouldn't that be a federal, uh, adopt a federally um, developed curricula? Well, the way that the system got around that, of course, is that the states had the option to accept the Common Core curricula, which none of us want, um, or at least at the local level, no one wants it. But the state accepted it because they were, the feds had a carrot of all the money that they were going to give if you did it, uh, accept it. So that's how the federal government gets around 
it, its own law, which says that they cannot have a, a uh, uh, you cannot, let's see, where does it say? Yeah, it forbids federally determined curricula, but then they get around it by saying, well, yeah, but you know, we do have a curriculum we'd like you to do, and uh, we can't tell you to do it, but here's a whole lot, whole lot of money that you'll get if you do adopt this. And so the state of Washington decided to adopt it, and our legislators had the, cha had the chance to uh, ignore it. But of course, they didn't. And that's another question I have about our legislators, and I want, I'd, like to, I'd like to have you ask them, why did you do that? Well, the answer is going to be, well, we get lots of money, maybe. Well, there were some states that didn't do it, and they don't have these problems now. So there's, again, elections have consequences. I'm going to keep saying this uh, if I actually come across this kind of stuff, because no one seems to make the connection between what we have to do here and what the legislators are telling us what to do. And it just keeps on going like this, and it just, it's, it's maddening. So here, I mean, this Title I thing, it's just a, uh, it, it could be easily something we could just, you know, let's just adopt it, pass it, and no one even looks at it because we've had this Title I since 65, and it has to do with um, monies coming from the Fed to help us with certain uh, you know, underfunded and or, um, what's the word? Uh, it's, it's supplemental supplemental so, um, Disadvantaged. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, I just I just find it interesting, you know, that, uh, when you when you see these uh, these laws that we that the districts have to deal with all the time that are, that are in total contradiction, it would seem, with what we have to do the next in the next uh, few steps in the agenda. Even and it's just so interesting. But uh, anyway, that's my comment. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion. All right. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> All right. Um, item B approve MOU use of school district facilities during disaster response Pacific County. I move that the board approve the memorandum of understanding to use the school district facilities during a disaster response in Pacific County. Second. We move and seconded. Discussion? Did we get any funding, or we never got any funding from the grants for, for this, did we? Okay. Is there supposed to be? This is just a community goodwill thing. to get your checkbooks out when we have a disaster and this building gets screwed up. I think they mentioned somewhere in there that we can apply for emergency funds if it's necessary or something like that, but that's, that's the only reference to money. Yeah. Further discussion? Been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Okay, item C is interview candidates for interim superintendent. Okay, so, um, so what the board is going to do at this time is um, the board will be allowed one at a time to ask questions, and we're going to ask questions in alternating fashion. So that if we maybe start with Lisa, and then we'll ask John a question. The second question, then we'll go to John, and then to Lisa. And uh, um, and I sent the proposed questions. If you have some of your own questions, um, that would be fine. And uh, you know, we don't really have a set number of questions um, to ask. I would think that you know somewhere around. 10 to 15 questions, I would say. And then probably at that time, um, uh, I'll open it up to um, questions from the community. Um, and I would hope that you know, the community and the board alike can, can keep it pretty professional and respectful. And hopefully it's questions you know, that maybe you have of a candidate to handle a particular situation. So, um, I guess at this time, um, Art, you might as well start. I'm going to work this way. Um, what was the order? Um, who is going to be first? <laughs> Ladies 
first? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you defer. <laughs> yes, I defer. <laughs>